In May of this year, I released a video titled Audio Audits DVT, The Professional Bully, and this is the follow-up video to that. This video is not intended for children. If you're a child, please leave now. Before we get into things, I want to mention that this video is listed under comedy, because it was made clear to me that Steve can do and say whatever he wants, because it's all just comedy. So the same principles must apply to me. If you don't like anything I say, it was just a joke. I want to start off by mentioning that Steve has seen the original video. This has been confirmed by his manager, Tony Kapaki, and you can listen to the full interview we did here. It's also important to note that Steve has been actively avoiding it, and has declined interviews that were offered to him multiple times in the making of this video. He is aware of the original points made in the first video. So let's expand on one of those points I made. Steve caters to a young audience. Silly faces, general mannerisms. <laughs> and at least some topics. Don't worry, baby, I know what'll cheer you up. Oh, baby! Um, oh, no. And he's well aware that his audience does at least partially consist of kids. And then kids tell me that I inspired them to pick up guitar. I pride myself on creating content that is family friendly for the most part. The only figures I have are ones given to me verbally from his agent. And those are less than 5% of his audience are kids. So less than 5% of Steve's audience um, is, is under the age of 18. And those are demographics that even in the United States, tobacco companies would still allow him to target his fans with. If we round up to 5%, that's still well over 100,000 children. And that's from 13 to 17. YouTube doesn't show any statistics for under 13. And we know there are younger viewers. Much younger. Here are just a few examples that I found. He's promoted games aimed at kids in the past too. I found a game that really takes me back to when I was a young shredder. Kind of like the games I grew up playing. For example, here's me as a young shredder. And even in the not so distant past, the 29th of November. How do I keep this PG? Why would you need to keep something PG if kids weren't watching? Well, they are. In fact, they're even covering your songs. So promoting an adult actress to this audience isn't a great idea. We've covered it before, and we've seen little kids going to those types of videos and citing Steve as the reason for doing so. All covered in the previous video, but with that in mind, a little bit of a jump. SpongeBob SquarePants is a children's TV show. There will be inevitably someone who will argue that, so <sighs> here we go. If it's not enough that it's property of Nickelodeon, the children's TV station, and it can only be found on the kids section in TV, we could take a look at some statistics. SpongeBob is officially rated a TVY. The FCC's definition of that is programs aimed at a very young audience, including children aged from two to six. We could also look at the Q score, a metric used in the US to determine recognizability. Shockingly, the cartoon Sponge writes very highly with a very young audience. And if you're still in doubt, the first words you hear on any Spongebob episode are Are you ready, kids? And before anyone tries to argue that they watched Spongebob as a kid, so therefore kids don't watch Spongebob, episodes are aired daily on Nick and Nicktoons, with a brand new movie released just this year. There is a very young and active audience. Right, now that we're all on the same page that the cartoon Sponge is aimed at kids, that new movie was released on August 14th, just 23 days prior to a new Stevie T video about Spongebob. Spongebob was featured in the title, thumbnail, overall topic of the video, description, and had 12 references in the tags. This video clearly targets a young audience, even visually. That's a 33-year-old, by the way. Steve's agent insists that they don't target a child audience. The reason given was children don't have any money to spend, so it doesn't make sense for them to advertise to them. That demographic is the least active in terms of spend, right? They don't have any money. So that sounds like a really callous thing to say, but that's just the truth. Like The, the, the goal for us has always been create a sustainable audience, um, and then also when it comes in terms of like, targeting, there's no reason for him to target a young audience. And while on the surface that might make sense, I disagree. Kids don't have money, but they do have buying power. 
Otherwise, the majority of advertising on children's TV wouldn't exist. Most children's toys wouldn't exist, and the US wouldn't have to legislate pester power, making it illegal for advertisers to ask children to ask their parents to buy something for them. While kids don't earn money, they certainly have access to it, and that's a market that Steve has tapped into in the past. But more importantly, the FTC's COPPA regulations, which every uploader on this entire platform have to abide by, and that can be enforced legally, globally. Well, those regulations clearly stipulate that using children's cartoon characters and songs from those children's shows Let's sit around the campfire and sing our campfire song R-C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song As well as the overall topic being a children's topic, you know, like Spongebob, make that video aimed at kids. And there's a substantial difference between the occasional Spongebob meme in a video is mayonnaise an instrument? And a video about Spongebob. Cue the I'm 50 and I watched that video. Yes, that makes it a mixed audience. It still has to abide by those exact same regulations. It's no problem though, you just tick the little box that says made for kids when you're uploading the video. Steve, you should know about this because your entire career is based off YouTube, it's been active for over a year, and it was mentioned in the previous video which we know you watched. But if you're not familiar, that box does two things. It turns off targeted advertising, which would give Steve a pay cut of about 80% on that video. The second thing it does, I think, is far more important. It turns off comments on that video. The reason being was predators were going to videos that appealed to children. You know, like videos about Spongebob. And they were grooming kids in the comments. You didn't tick the box, Steve. Right now, you are putting a shit ton of kids in real danger. But hey, you haven't listened to anything I've said in the past, so why start now? Well, I'm probably being far too nice by giving you this warning, but maybe it'll get you to actually do something. At the time of this video's upload, I will have just have reported that video to the FTC for clear violations of the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. So you've got a very limited amount of time before they start sniffing around that video, and if they find violations, which let's be honest, they will, they can fine you up to $43,000 per violation. I couldn't put it better than the FTC themselves. So oh, the analogy that I think of imperfect is um, the expression about shooting fish in a barrel. And YouTube is the barrel and the content creators are the fish. And so it's a place where, these, where this content is centralized and essentially it's easy for us to find. You're in their barrel now, Steve. If I were you, I tick the box. That Spongebob video in question was perfectly above board when it comes to children's content and was most definitely family friendly. And when I first saw it, I thought Steve was leaning into child oriented videos because he is a good child entertainer. At the end of that video, he asks the viewers or uh, goofy goobers to subscribe so they can see more videos from him. If you don't subscribe, I will be depressed like Squidward. Why do they never subscribe? <laughs> and I will see you, Goofy Goobers, in the next video. Forgive me for this next bit, but eight videos later, he uploads a video with a sponsorship from a toy shop. Pretty on brand, actually. Oh, wait. It's an adult toy shop. You know, I think that you need to get a gift for your significant other. Things are getting pretty stale in the bedroom. 50% off one item in the store with free shipping. If you go to adamandeve.com and use promo code Steve. Now see, this looks like fun. Stevie, things are getting stale in the bedroom. Me, a 13 year old child. I could say a lot of things, Steve, a lot. But instead I'll simply say this. If you went out in public with a SpongeBob background, surrounded yourself with SpongeBob toys, played SpongeBob music, and talked about Spongebob, it's pretty safe to say you generate an audience of young children. If you ask them to come back for more, and I will see you, Goofy Goobers, in the next video, built up a small amount of trust when they did, and then gave them 50% discounts in a sex shop, I'm pretty sure you'd be arrested. I personally don't see much difference when you do it online. And here's where people will blame parents for letting their kids watch Stevie. That's part of the reason why this video is titled, A Parent's Worst Nightmare. It's a warning. If parents vetted videos like the Spongebob one, they'd find nothing wrong with it. 
it's perfectly fine for any kid to watch. It's also an incredibly difficult task for any working parent to vet every single thing their kids watch. And then of course, unfortunately not all kids have people looking out for them, and those are the kids that get taken advantage of the most. So call me crazy for this idea, but I think if you're making content that clearly appeals to a very young audience, you have the obligation to not try sell little kids butt plugs. Steve, you're a dick. That's not by my standards, I'd call you so much worse. That's by your own standards. Richard Benson, that's a name you should be familiar with. He's the man that was both mentally and physically ill, which you ridiculed for 12 minutes in front of 2 million people. You released that video on December 8th, 2018, and claimed to not know of his illnesses at that time. Two months later, on February 15th, 2019, you acknowledged that he had issues, half apologised, and then continued to make fun of him. Richard was the punchline of that video. On May 3rd, 2020, 15 months later, a viewer called you out on your behaviour. You thought it would be a great idea to make fun of that viewer and allow your fans to go harass him. But then you did give a half-assed apology to Richard. You know, I went back and rewatched my Richard Benson video and I totally came off as a dick. Which I really do regret and I will delete the video if you guys want me to. And again, apologies to Richard Benson as well. Did people want you to delete the video? Yes. But you didn't. Instead, that announcement only drove more traffic to that fully monetized video. That's a fact. So yeah, I agree with you. You are a dick. Let's revisit another topic. BetterHelp. BetterHelp was a mental health service that turned into a massive controversy. People who signed up for a free trial were charged, and charged a considerable amount. The therapists weren't always actual therapists. The sessions had little to no privacy, and that's if sessions happened at all. A lot of people had their sessions cancelled. Steve did a video focused on mental health, which would be a good thing if it wasn't centered around an ad read for better help. Since we're on the topic of depression, there's something I want to show you guys, and I know this is going to look like a shameless plug, but I promise you it's not. There's an app out there called BetterHelp for people with depression or any issues in general who feel like they need someone to talk to. He had an affiliate link for it. Follow my link, betterhelp.com slash stevieT. And it was later found out that BetterHelp paid YouTubers $200 per person who signed up through those links. That's a lot of money when you advertise to millions of subscribers. It's been confirmed that YouTubers have been paid $200 per person that they get to sign up for BetterHelp. $200. That's a lot of money. Just get a thousand people signing up, you just made $200,000. You cannot put a price on your own well-being. Many big name YouTubers did the exact same thing and received the same scrutiny for it, and rightfully so. But there's a difference between a lot of those YouTubers and Stevie. In fact, two differences. The first is that you can't find a lot of those original videos. Most pulled them down. Steve's is still active and influential to this day. And secondly, those videos weren't breaking advertising standards laws. Steve is. And I know this is gonna look like a shameless plug, but I promise you it's not. Well, that's certainly not a disclosure that you're being paid a whole lot of money for it. In fact, it's the complete opposite. At minimum, it's misleading advertising, which is illegal pretty much all around the world. But considering you're Canadian, I'm gonna read off an excerpt from CanadianAdvertisingLaw.com. It's in relation to what agencies go after for misleading advertising from social media influencers. Most importantly for enforcement agencies, where the material connection between a brand and the influencer is not adequately disclosed to consumers. Steve, that's you. Anyway, we've talked about it before. You're aware of it, so, so what's new? Nothing. The video is still up taking full advantage of people when they're at their weakest. I have seriously never looked down on someone as much as I have of you because of this. You could go into YouTube Studio right now and remove that clip, but you haven't. You are taking advantage of people when they're looking for help, and instead of doing something actually good with your platform, you're sending them to this website that's expensive and most certainly not reliable. Seriously, and I want you to think about this. This could be the difference between life and death for some people. Think about it. In the last video, I made the point that you weaponize your fan base against just ordinary people who can't defend themselves against a mob. A prime example being your haters video, where you class even the most valid criticism as hate. 
I showed evidence of your fanbase harassing people, enabled by you not censoring anybody's names. And you've seen it, you know what happens. And you did it again. And this video has some spectacular examples, like I don't know, you openly acknowledging your fanbase can and will harass people at your request. Ways to release anger. Seek help. Can you guys help me rip this guy apart? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, it was a joke. <laughs> well, maybe I just don't get it. See, I'd say publishing non-public figures' full names to an audience of millions in a negative light would be highly irresponsible. But when you're fully aware that your audience, how do I put this, rip people apart on your behalf, that's just malicious. And that's pretty bad. But you still managed to one-up yourself because you did it to a minor. So here's the heavily edited version of her hate comment that you've given us. Please stop ruining songs with sweet picking, thanks. Oof, when a teenage girl insults her sweet picking, we need to retaliate here. She has videos. You show her full name, you show her channel, and you show her videos. To an audience that rip people apart on your behalf. This is the same video where you acknowledge that people do that. You're a f***ing asshole. Although fair play to her, she made a video responding to that. I literally have 36 subscribers and that was my first video and that one comment got to you like I got to you also because of that video I've been getting like a lot of hate comments and everything on my page like on literally every video it's like this needs more sweet picking so I kind of think that's a little bit funny but it kind of does get annoying so if everybody could stop that would be awesome and Steve commented on that video let's have a read no hate here most hateful comments are just hateful. Haha. Ha. Your comment was actually constructive criticism. And ironically, I agree with your stance on sweet picking. It can be overused for sure. He agrees. I also used your comment because you actually had videos. Haha. Ha. Literally 99% of the comments I looked at didn't have content. It was just perfect for my video. So thank you. Haha. Ha. I truly hope you don't get any actual hate, if so they're gonna have to answer to me. That last sentence is absolute bullshit and we all know it. Steve has never once reprimanded anyone for taking action on his behalf, in fact he's encouraged it. But I just want to go back to the previous bit. I also used your comment because you actually had videos. Ha <laughs> ha. Literally 99% of the comments I looked at didn't have content. It was just perfect for my video. So thank you. Ha <laughs> ha. Steve? I have lots of videos, ha ha. and so does Levi Clay, who also made a video on you, ha ha. and Jake Scheman, and Lucas Lecomte. But maybe you didn't react to them because the criticism is a little bit harsher than we don't like your sweep picking. Do you know I called you a bully last time, but this actually just compounds it even further. A bully won't take on anyone who could defend themselves. I guess a teenage girl with 36 subscribers is a worthy adversary though. But hey, maybe it's not that. Maybe we just didn't put the ball in your court. So, I've got something for you. I'm gonna play a riff. Did you like that, Steve? I took the liberty of syncing it incorrectly so that you can accuse me of being a fake. And also, I just want you to loop that and you can shred over it. I'm sure your shredding will definitely null the points about you advertising sex shops to children. In conclusion to this series of videos, I'm calling Steve a parent's worst nightmare. Mixing videos that most certainly appeal to children with videos that definitely do not. Steve, I urge you to pick one, either family friendly or not. You're good at both, but they don't go well together. In fact, I think the branding of Parents Worst Nightmare works really well for you. It would actually indicate that videos are not made for kids. This final message is to anyone viewing. Don't go to Steve's channel, don't comment on his videos, don't harass him. He'll see the video himself. You don't need to tell him about it. I don't condone any of that behaviour and if you partake in it, I think you're just as bad as the things I've been criticising here today. Don't. Alright, that's all from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.